Hello, I am Zarkoon and this is World of Warships Legends. Today I want to talk about supporting your teammates in a battleship. In the last video I did on a battleship, I was in the legendary tier IJN battleship Yamato. And I had a couple people in my comment section who disagreed with the advice that I gave in that game. That video was called something like how to survive longer in a battleship or something like that. And if you watch it, you'll note that there are four enemy destroyers on the team in that game. And in situations like that, I kind of thought it was clear. Like the video title was how to survive longer in your battleships. You find yourself in a game versus four destroyers. I thought it was clear that that advice was mostly applicable to those kind of games, the kind of games where you don't want to push in. And to know whether you can or can't push in in a battleship, uh, you do have to pay attention to the team composition and to your spawn points and to the map you're on. In this case, we spawn, I guess, north of the Charlie Cap on this map, whose name escapes me right now. And we've got a Bismarck and a Benson with us. Now this Bismarck and Benson are both charging into the cap. The only thing we can see out there is a Georgia, and yet we were spotted well before the Georgia came within our detectability range. In fact, he's not within our detectability range, so that means we were spotted by a destroyer. So we know there's a destroyer out here, and that means we don't want to push into the cap. But I said I wanted to talk about supporting your teammates. And the first thing I want to say is that supporting your teammates doesn't always mean pushing into the same area of the map as them, especially if you're in a battleship. If you're in a battleship, you really are not suited to push into a capture circle in the first, what is this, two minutes of the game. It's generally not something you want to do, and if you do decide to push straight into a capture circle two minutes into the game, well, then you're liable to eat some torpedoes and die. Now, the Bismarck has chosen to push into this capture circle, and likely both of these guys would like my support. And there are probably people watching this video who think, because I'm not pushing with these guys or not in some sort of different position, that I'm not supporting my teammates here, the Benson and the Bismarck. But I disagree. What I'm trying to do right now is get around this island so that I can get shots into this Georgia's broadside. Based on where this Georgia is located, he needs to angle against either me or the Bismarck. He really can't angle against both of us. Right now, he's turning away a little bit, I think, to get all of his guns on the Bismarck, who's charging straight at him, and as a result, he's giving broadside to me. Now, if he turns in to point his nose more at the Bismarck, he's still going to be giving broadside to me, and in that way, I have positioned myself into a place where I can get access to a crossfire. And that is what you want to do in a battleship. It's to put your battleship in a position where you have access to broadsides. Oftentimes, that means going closer to the center, which is what I'm doing here. Now, imagine that Bismarck hadn't pushed in and died like that to the torpedoes of the Lo Yang. Well, you know, at that point, maybe the two of us together could have taken out this Georgia and left this Benson, well, not left him, but allowed him to have more of an advantage in that way. Maybe he could have outspotted the enemy destroyers over there. Maybe he could have shot at them and we could have helped him. And maybe this flank would have been wrapped up very quickly and I could have pushed further into the center and got some broadside shots on that Gneisenau. Or potentially even further and got some broadside shots on the battleship pushing into Alpha. The centralized position in a battleship is a good position because it allows you access to the flanks where other ships are often pushing and because of your location in the center, if some ships are pushing toward the flanks, then you are going to have a much easier time finding their broadsides. That is essentially the value of centralized battleship positioning, and that is why I said in that last video that it's a good thing. Not in all games, but you can see little hints of it in this game, and you could see little hints of it in the last game. But like I said, not in all games. Everything I'm saying in this video and everything that I say in all of my videos 
generally, for the most part, is based off the gameplay I'm watching before my eyes. And now every game is different, every situation is different. The advice that I'm giving, I hope, is sort of fluid advice. It's not going to apply in every situation at every time, but there's some good general generalities that I try to put out there that people can follow in most games, and in most games, hopefully it's going to help them out. Now, anyway, I want to talk a little bit more about tanking in a battleship. And speaking of tanking, you can see here that both this Georgia and I are angled against each other pretty well. Neither of us are really able to do damage with our armor piercing. And in that last video where I gave advice on battleships with the Yamato, I had some people telling me that the job of the battleship is to tank. Well, I think that Bismarck that pushed into the cap circle early on probably thought the same thing, and he has sunk. So there is a way to tank, and I think the best way to tank is to put yourself in a position where you are a threat to the enemy team, and they have to deal with you. And basically, you're such a threat that they really want to shoot at you, to maybe dissuade you from occupying whatever position you're in, or try to chase you off, or try to do enough damage to you to actually sink you. At that point, that's when you want to tank, when you know that you can tank safely. There's a difference between setting yourself up in such a way where you can tank safely and pushing straight into the enemy's guns so that you're the most attractive target for them. You don't want to be the most attractive target for the enemy in any ship, even a battleship, especially if there are multiple enemies. There is no ship in this game that can stand up long to sustained focus fire from multiple other ships, no matter what they are, even if I was the Imagi facing off against two cruisers that I couldn't kill instantly with dev strikes. Over time, they'd be able to get fires on me and take away my hit points. So you don't want to make yourself an attractive target in any ship, much less a battleship. You want to make yourself a threat that the enemy has to deal with, and then you can tank. There's no reason to charge in, like, for example, to a cap circle at the beginning of the game. There's no reason to charge straight in, be the most visible thing to the enemy team and the juiciest thing and then just get all of your hit points taken away and die. No, if you want to tank, then you want to be a threat to the enemy. You want to be a threat that they have to deal with. You don't want to be an attractive morsel to the enemy. You don't want to be a juicy dinner, you know? You don't want to be flashing your broadsides and having them shoot at you and think, I can take this guy down quickly. That's not tanking. That's just putting yourself in a position where you can get killed really, really easily. There's a difference between the two things. Another thing to talk about just because this duel between myself and the Georgia is taking so long to conclude, well, we're both angled against each other. This Georgia and I are both doing a very good job of angling, actually. You can see he's sort of in a position where it's not going to take too much to get all of his guns on target. Actually, maybe he's a little too open to me. And I'm also in a position where, again, it's not going to take me too long to get all my guns on target. But neither of us are really doing damage to each other, whether that's because of our angling, or because of our aim, or because of RNG, maybe a combination of all those things, I don't know. In any case, in situations like this where you're dealing with an angled battleship and your armor piercing is not super effective, well, you want to do what this Georgia just did, and that switch to the high explosive. Because in order for armor piercing to work, it has to hit an uh, armored surface, uh, belt armor, an armor plate, whatever. And if that belt armor or that armored surface is angled in such a way, well, your AP is going to be a lot less effective. But on the other hand, you have high explosive. High explosive does not care about the angle of armor. All it cares about is how thick the armor is and whether it can penetrate that armor thickness. Doesn't matter what the angle is. In order to figure that out, by the way, you take the caliber of your guns in millimeters and divide by six. And that generally, for most ships, gives you the armor threshold that your high explosive shells 
can penetrate. So don't be afraid to switch to high explosive in situations like this. It is, in fact, the better choice. You should shoot armor piercing probably 90% of the time in your battleship. And if you're a new player, you should probably shoot armor piercing 100% of the time and pay attention to what the shells do when they hit the target and what the target looks like, how he's angled, so that you can sort of get a feel for when the armor piercing shells are going to be effective at what angles and where you need to shoot the armor piercing shells at. And then once you get experienced in understanding how high explosive works, then you can switch back to the HE. But, you know, for anybody who's experienced enough in this game and finds themselves never switching to HE in a battleship, well, you should maybe take a second, reevaluate uh, your outlook on that, and think, are there situations where my AP just isn't effective and where HE would be more effective and probably maybe not in all of your games but in a good number of them you're going to find those situations and you're going to say well this is where i switched to he and don't be afraid to do it now also i want to point something out in retrospect earlier in the game the bismarck did kill the lo yang with his secondaries and at that point if I had looked at the map, I would have known that that Z-35 that we just saw was on the other side of the map, meaning the Friesland was the only thing on this side of the map. So maybe a little bit of a misplay on my part. In this game, I perhaps did not need to play as defensively as I actually did. I think after that Lo Yang went down and after the Bismarck went down, I could have actually turned in there and killed the Georgia, and the Friesland with the help of that Benson and maybe supported that Benson a little better in that way. He did ping me for support, but I did not turn around to help him. And in retrospect, looking back at this game, I absolutely could have done that quite safely and probably quite effectively. So another piece of advice, it does help if you can record your own gameplay and watch it back to see what you do. Oftentimes you'll notice places where you could have made better choices and there was definitely at least one of those in this game in any case what was i saying here as we are wrapping up well when this game ends i want you to take a look at the leaderboard now i'm not going to be top of the leaderboard obviously we didn't do an impressive amount of damage in this game by any means or a ton of impressive things either for that matter but I'm going to end up second on the leaderboard with, I think, nearly 2,000 base XP. The person on the top of the leaderboard is going to be the friendly Benson. And I think the reason he is on the top of the leaderboard is because he went into that Charlie cap. He flipped it. He did some damage to the Georgia. He did some damage probably to the Lo Yang. And he did quite a bit of damage to the Friesland. And he basically helped me, well, we helped each other sort of hold back three enemy ships from getting into that cap. So the Benson tops the leaderboard for his contribution to winning the game. And I follow him, despite the, I guess you could say, sort of passive way I played this game. I would call it the safe way that I played this game. There's a time for aggression and pushing in, and there's a time for more passivity and playing defensively. And, you know, you just got to evaluate the situation. You got to read the room. You got to figure out whether you can push in safely or whether you need to play more defensively. It's never a good idea to throw away your ship for no reason. So there are times to play aggressively. There are times to play defensively. And basically, I think, like I said earlier in the video, all of my advice and all of the games, well, all the games are all different. Situations are fluid. And hopefully the advice I'm giving you is fluid too. Not everything I say is written in stone, the be-all, end-all advice of how to play. I'm not like... Uh, super expert on this game. I'm not a super unicum. I'm just somebody that I think knows quite a bit about this game, and hopefully there's value in watching what I have to say on it. But as this game wraps up, again, take a look at the leaderboard. I'm going to be second. The Benson is going to be first. And the Bismarck, who I think sort of represents the wrong view of what battleships are supposed to do, 
uh, in his particular play in this game, I'm not saying that the Bismarck is a bad player who is representative of all battleship players. I'm saying the decisions he made in this game represent bad battleship choices to me, and while I'm second from the top, he is second from the bottom. So I think our placement on the leaderboards, you know, should tell you about the value of playing it a little safer, a little bit more defensive sometimes. And if you want to see some advice on how to push in and how to play aggressively, I do have videos on that, but I'm happy to make more. So let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.